Okay, let's talk about receive antennas for uh, noisy environments. I've got one antenna I wanted to try here, but uh, I was, to be honest, I was very, very sceptical. I didn't think it would work that well because vertical antennas typically tend to be quite noisy. But um, I was talking to Chris from Cross Country Wireless and uh, I'm not sponsored by them, but he sent me out one of these um, high Z or high Z amplifiers uh, to try for a uh, high impedance vertical. And like I said, I'm not sponsored. He sent it out for me to try and uh, I have to uh, send it back or if I want to keep it, I have to pay the full asking price like everyone else. So uh, like I say, not sponsored, but if I show you, uh, so this is the cross country wireless website and uh, it's literally just a little amplifier box like that. And uh, if we read here, it's uh, typical use. The antenna element is between three and six meters. So about 10 to 20 feet vertical rod or wire. And ground connection is a single earth or ground rod. Now, uh, stuffed down the side of my shed, uh, laying on the floor, I had a um, aluminium scaffold pole which uh, wasn't being used, so I repurposed that. That's five and a half metres long, so it's sort of uh, approaching the six metre mark, which is what's uh, recommended here. And uh, as I said, ground connection, single earth rod, uh, single earth or ground rod, which is what I've got set up at the moment. Um, I did ask Chris about this on the email and uh, he said um, a counterpoise may be beneficial but it's probably not going to make a huge amount of difference. So I've not bothered with the counterpoise for the moment. Um, it needs um, it needs uh, bias T power so basically you send power down the um, coaxial cable to it. Now you can get a little circuit board that does that. I've got, um, if I can grab it out here and uh, switch back onto the main camera. I've got one of these SDR play, um, SDR receiver boxes and that's actually got power built in. So I'm just powering it with that and I'm doing my usual test uh, with two computers, two separate computers. I'll show you that in a second. But... Um, on here, one of the things I quite like, it has a uh, built-in common mode filter on the RF output, so uh, no need for a separate common mode filter. And um, the other interesting thing is um, in here it has uh, RF overload protection to stop you blowing up your receiver. So if you want to transmit on a separate antenna and receive on this antenna at the same time you can do. Uh, it has uh, optional diode limiter um, so basically you've got a jumper wire in there which uh, if it's um, installed then it'll protect your um, SDR play receiver or whatever receiver you're using. If, uh, if you cut that jumper then uh, it gives you full output. Now I have to admit the one I've got here is uh, demo version that Chris has sent me. I've not actually uh, checked inside the box to see whether that um, jumper's fitted or not, so I don't know. So I'm not going to transmit, but uh, I'm just doing a receive test. I'm going to test it side by side with my NFED half wave. Now, picture time. So here's my uh, setup here. I've just put it in the back garden. There's my um, five and a half meter tall uh, aluminium pole. Um, the antenna amplifier is down the bottom there and uh, these white bits. I, I wasn't sure, I don't think the wooden fence would affect it, certainly not whilst it's dry but after it rained if the fence was wet would it affect it? Probably not but uh, I decided to put some insulators in there anyway so if we uh, go on to the next photo. So there you go, you can see I had some uh, PVC pipe, uh, water pipe or waste pipe which fitted really nicely and conveniently um, around the pole. Oops, the pole slipped inside the PCB really nicely, perfect fit. And um, I've just put a couple of rivets in there to stop the pole sliding down. And then uh, 
bolted it onto my fence. Now it's not ideal because there's a lot of trees here. It's very close to the trees and if the trees touch it, it's, I'm not sure if that would affect it or not, but it's not ideal, not the best location, but um, it, it's working and um, you can see the uh, amplifier down the bottom there. Um, so there's up close the uh, PVC pipe uh, with the pole inside and you can't see the rivets there but there are uh, I just put a rivet through each side just to uh, stop the pole sliding down inside whilst it's clamped and there's your amplifier so I've got a wire comes out of the amplifier just connects onto a bolt which I've run through the uh, aluminium pole there um, earth wire there uh, goes down to uh, just an earth rod, I think it's a uh, three metre long earth rod I've put in the ground. Um, and then uh, nice thick, I think this is RG213, nice thick cable up to the uh, shack in here. So um, that is the setup. Now testing it, I've got uh, two computer screens here. And if I put you on my other camera, you can see... Um, this uh, screen up here, same as the test I did the other day with the loop on the ground, this screen is connected to my uh, desktop computer, uh, which has got the uh, RSP1A SDR receiver on it. And this uh, tablet is completely independent, completely separate from the other computer. It's connected into, can you see this? It might just be out of shot. Yeah, you can just about see here, I've got a... Uh, Yesu FT857. So uh, essentially, I've got two completely separate receive um, systems. And uh, actually, I just realized I can do something clever here. So you got me down the bottom of the screen so you can see me as I talk. So basically, I've got two completely separate receiver systems here. The tablet computer down the bottom here is uh, connected to the N fed half wave via the um, 857 here. And the um, a uh, screen up the top here is connected to my main computer which has got the uh, RSP1A SDR receiver connected to the um, to the vertical so I've just run I've just tested 80 meters and uh, 40 meters side by side and uh, I have to say I'm actually quite surprised I didn't expect this to work quite so well because um, I've always thought you know the vertical antennas generally considered to be quite noisy i thought i didn't think it was going to be any better than my nfed half wave but um if we have a look so let's take uh let's just pick a couple of random stations off the list here so i've got a um, french station here f4 frq um came in at minus 15 db on the nfed half wave uh, minus 16 on the vertical so not a huge amount of difference there and um, we got um, DF2JP this is where it gets interesting he's minus 11 here and minus 6 on the vertical so he's actually uh, well basically 5 dB uh, better on the um, high Z vertical than he is on the uh, end fed half wave and then um, this German station, DK2DB, he's minus 17 on the NFED half wave. Uh, he's minus 14 on the uh, vertical. So not a huge amount of difference. But then at the same time, we've picked up a Dutch station on the vertical at minus 30. So it's right on the limit of what can be received, um, which we haven't picked up on the... Um, Enfield half wave, which is interesting. So, eighty meters is much, much. It's it's definitely keeping up with the Enfield half wave. Is it significantly better? It's hard to say. Those the stations that are stronger are probably in the null on the um, Enfield half wave. Don't forget the Enfield half wave is. Um, 
basically directional. Now, you can argue it's low to the ground, so that would make it a bit more omnidirectional, but you've still got probably a couple of lobes on it because it's effectively a um, half-wave dipole that's, well, fed at the end. So you're still probably going to have some, uh, you know, some nulls on there. Not massive nulls, but because it's so low to the ground, but you're still going to have a bit of uh, lobes and nulls going on there. Whereas the... Uh, vertical won't have that'll be omnidirectional but uh, let's go on and uh, go on 40 meters now I ran it on as you can see I ran it on both 40 and 80 so let's uh, top of the list so f4 frq is minus 16 on the nfed half wave um, minus 14 on the vertical so not a huge difference um and then uh, that df2 jp minus 13 on the nfed half wave minus nine on the vertical so he's slightly better but this is where it gets interesting the dl9 gcw he is minus eight on the nfed half wave and um plus six on the um, vertical so he is significantly stronger on the vertical and then uh, let's uh, go a bit further down the list what else have we got so let's dj4 ff he's minus 25 n fed half wave minus 18 on the vertical so stronger again on the vertical same with uh, uh, DK two DB is he on there? So minus twenty one, minus eighteen. So not as big a difference. Um, but what I'm noticing is, especially on this last round here, the uh, vertical seems to be picking up more stations than the Enfred half wave. So. Um, I'm coming to the conclusion that the vertical is better. So let's pick a couple more. OE9 MCV minus 14, minus 7. So he's 7 dB stronger. Uh, or 7 dB closer to the noise on the vertical. Um, DB5LS is minus 8 on the vertical. Minus 14 on the end fed half wave. So... To conclude then, to sum this up, on 80, it, it certainly keeps up with the NFED half wave, and in a couple of cases, it's uh, slightly better. Um, on 40 meters, it seems to do better with a lot of stations, which really surprised me, actually. I'm, uh, I'm actually very impressed with this, uh, uh, with this uh, high-z vertical. Now, Use case for this, I think, if you live in a noisy environment where your antenna's near the house, picking up a lot of noise, you put this right down the bottom of the garden, especially if you've got a big garden. I mean, I've only got a small garden, so I can't get it that far away, but if you could, uh, get it quite some way away from the house, it's got the built-in amplifier, so uh, um, you're not too worried about signal loss along the, uh, along the coax cable. It'll... Uh, bring the uh, signal levels up to the uh, or above the thre uh, noise threshold on the radio so um, you know if you've got a noisy environment near the house with your transmit antennas but your uh, receive and you can get this as a receive antenna quite a long way away then this is actually looking like quite a good antenna and even for me um, well, I haven't got it that far away from the house you know it's uh, between 5 and 10 dB better than the uh, NFED half wave on receive is nothing to be sniffed at. So uh, for me, um, like I said, Chris sent me this as a um, demonstrator to try out and make a video on. But uh, I think I'm going to be paying my money and keeping this, to be honest.